I've met some folk who say that I'm a dreamer And I've no doubt there's truth in what they say For sure a body's bound to be a dreamer When all the things he loves are far away I watch the moonlight peak Across the rooftops Of this great city Wondrous though it be I scarcely feel It's wonder Or it's laughter And precious things are dreams unto an exile. They take him all the land across the sea especially when it happens he's an exile from that dear lovely I love in his tree I wonder Birds make music fit for angels And what's the waters laughing as they go But dreams don't last, though dreams Soon I'm back to stare reality And though they paved the footpaths here with gold dust I still would choose my island I still would choose my I love in it.
Please be seated for a moment. And as we begin, family members now bring forward Dara, Tara, Elwani, Elodi to come forward with symbols representing Kathleen's earthly life and their place now before the altar. A religious item representing her faith, the Statue of Liberty representing her travels, a bottle of whiskey representing her profession as a landlady and a football jersey representing her commitment to sport within the parish and beyond. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome as we gather together here in St. Oliver, St. Lawrence O'Toole's Church in Faith to offer this Requiem Mass for the soul of Kathleen. I extend my sympathy and support and those of the parish community and beyond who cannot be here in person today owing to the present COVID restrictions. And I welcome also family members and friends who are watching over the internet from a distance, those in New York, especially Kathleen's sister, Angela. We offer our prayers and support as we gather to Kathleen's daughters, Mary, Patricia and Christine, her son, Sean, her sisters, Maura, Rita and Angela, as I said, in New York, who unfortunately cannot be here, to her brothers, Noel, Jared, and Colm, and Kathleen's grandchildren, and all the extended family. Today, we are grateful too for all that we have received through the life of Kathleen as a mother, a sister, a grandmother, friend, and parishioner. So as we begin to offer this Eucharist for the happy repose of our soul, let us now ask the Lord's forgiveness as we call to mind our faults and failings. O God, who are mercy for sinners and the happiness of your saints, give we pray to your servant Kathleen, for whom we perform the fraternal offices of burial, assure with your chosen ones and the blessedness you give, so that on the day of resurrection, freed from the bonds of mortality, she may come before your face, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please now be seated. And I invite Eamor and Sean now to come forward and lead us in our scripture readings. There is a kind of darkness and a kind of saving that we have in the heavens, a kind of be born, a kind of die, a kind of come, a kind of upright, a kind of fellow, a kind of hate, a kind of turn on, a kind of build, a kind of wake, a kind of love, a kind of be born, a kind of dance, a kind of scouts built, a kind of gallery, a kind of embrace, a kind of faith, a kind of a kind of search, a kind of give up, a kind of shape, a kind of throw away. A kind of terror, a kind of name, a kind of silent, a kind of speak, a kind of love, a kind of hate, a kind of war, a kind of place, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. washing, they are clean all over. 
You too are clean, though not all of you. He knew who was going to betray him. That was why he said, Though not all of you are. When he had washed their feet and put his clothes on again, he went back to the table. Do you understand, he said, what I have done to you? You call me Master and Lord, and rightly so I am. If I then, the Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you should wash each other's feet. I have given you an example, so that you may copy what I have done to you. The Gospel of the Lord. I am to give thanks and praise to God for the life and for the work of Catherine. And as I said at the beginning of Mass, we all want to offer our sympathy and our prayers to all the family, especially those who cannot be here today owing to the present restrictions. Kathleen's death, although expected after her short illness, was certainly a great blow to so many people, to her family and relations, friends and people she had worked with down the years in the family shop and pub here in the village, and also the many, many various committees and organisations within the parish that she was a member of. Her death leaves a void in our family and in the whole community. And we now, today, as we gather in faith and trust her soul to God, confident that today she will now enjoy new and eternal life in Christ. As we heard from our readings this morning, chosen by the family, the theme of new life certainly figures significantly in the readings for this Spratling Mass. A day like today reminds us that if we truly believe and trust in God's promises, He will bring about in us new life, and we who mourn, He will wipe away our tears. Kathleen's commitment to God and her faith went right back to her childhood and marked her whole life. The centre of her life was her family, and together with her late husband John, they both provided for and nourished their family life together until his passing. And their faith then was very much part of that journey down through the years. And Kathleen's own commitment extended beyond the family into the community, as I said, where she was a member of many committees and organisations throughout her life. And her loyal support and dedication will certainly be sadly missed. The Gospel passage today gives us a strong and a very visual story of service to others, as we saw, and how we too shall reflect the actions of Jesus in our own lives. In this beautiful story, which is read on Holy Thursday night, Jesus gives us the example of the servant who attends to the needs of others. And he directs his disciples to do the same. You must wash each other's feet. The meaning of this gesture is encapsulated in those words of Jesus. I give you a new commandment. You must love one another as I have loved you. We now continue with our prayer of the faithful, so please stand. And I invite Sean in, Kayleen, Ronan and Orlin now to come forward and lead us in our intentions. Almighty God, through the death of your Son on the cross, you destroyed our death. Through his rest in the tomb, you hallowed the graves of all who believe in you. And through his rising again, you restored us to new life. Can we place our needs before you now as we offer our intentions for Catherine and for all our needs. Granny lived a long life. May she obtain rest from her labors and be rewarded for all her goodness. A loving wife, mother, grandmother, sister, and friend who lived by example and cherished all those who were dear to her. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all our deceased relatives and friends. We remember especially her husband, 
Granny Chloe, her sister Helen, her brother Sean, her parents Granny and Granny Murphy, her brothers in law Patty, Pete, and Sean, and all her other relatives and friends who have gone before her. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious hear us. For Granny's family and friends, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord gracious me, hear us. Granny fought the good fight. She finished the race. She kept the faith. May she now receive from Christ the crown of eternal glory, which Christ won for us with his death and resurrection. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious me, hear us. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his church. And if we join in the responses. Be near, O Lord, we pray to your servant Kathleen, on whose funeral day we offer you this sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any stain of sin have come to her, or any human fault have affected her, it may, by your loving gift, be forgiven and wiped away. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying, as one he chose to die, so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In the same way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection 
you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence here this morning and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Eamon, Michael and Sean, our bishops, and all your holy people. Remember your servant Kathleen, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who is united with your Son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our many brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Lawrence of Tours, St. Padre Pio, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and form a divine teaching, we dare to pray. We stand together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all worry, fear and distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the glory of yours now and for him. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and your families at this time. Lamb of God, you take the <coughs> Please name. <coughs> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And our hearts are just 
God's garden. God looked around his garden and found an empty place. He then looked down upon the earth and saw a retired place. He put his arms around you and lifted you to rest. God's garden must be beautiful. He always takes the best. He knew that you were suffering. He knew that you were in pain. He knew that you would never get well on earth again. He saw the road was getting rough and the hills were hard to climb. So he closed your weary eyes and whispered, whisper, peace began. It broke our hearts to lose you, but you did not go alone. For part of us went with you the day that God called you home. Christ who would change our mortal bodies to conform with his glorious body. We remember Catherine today as we labour to rest that the Lord may have mercy on our soul. We join once again with our loved ones whom she loved in this life and united again we pray in eternal peace. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. And just before a final prayer, I just want to thank the family members who met us in our readings, our prayer of the faithful, and our communion reflection. And we thank our undertakers for their dignified and respectful care and support that they showed to the family during Catherine's passing. And our thanks to Veronica for filling in today for Saperson and preparing the church. And again, we offer our sympathies and our support and prayers to all the family at this time here at home and to those watching and listening via the internet. And please be assured of our prayers for all of you in the days and weeks ahead as you mourn the loss of Catherine. And may she rest in peace. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that your servant, Kathleen, who has journeyed from this world, may by this sacrifice be cleansed and freed from sin, and so receive the everlasting joys of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister Catherine. May our farewell express our affection for her, may it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we should joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. And let us pray in silence for the soul of Catherine as we sprinkle her coffin with holy water, a symbol and a sign for baptism in Christ, and incense, a sign and a symbol of our prayers rising to heaven. That the Lord may have mercy upon her soul. Receive her soul and present her to God most high. Saints of God come to her aid, hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. Receive her soul and present her to God most high. May Christ who call you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive her soul and present her to God most high. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Let us pray. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Kathleen in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with them on the last day. We give you thanks for the many blessings which you have bestowed upon Kathleen in this life, for your signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Mercy of the Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain, to comfort one another with assurances of faith, 
until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with our sister Catherine forever and ever. Amen. In peace, let us now take our sister Catherine to her place of rest. There were people all ages gathered around the gable wall. Poor and tumble men and women, little children that you call. We are gathered here before you. And our hearts are just the same Filled with joy at such a vision As we praise your name Golden Rose Queen of Iron As I kneel with love before you, Lady of Knock, my Queen of Peace. Though you but the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory, for he is risen the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend our sister Kathleen to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace her in peace and raise up her body on the last day. Draw thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. She rest in peace. Amen. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. And let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. With you sir. May Almighty God bless and protect you and your families, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Let us go in the peace of the risen Christ. Thanks be to God. Queen of peace, Lady of love, my Queen of Memories of our mum, a wonderful mother. Captain Josephine Murphy, born on the 20th of March 1940 at Warries in the townland of Tully O'Gallaghan, the first of nine children to Tom Murphy and Mary Garvey. The family moved a few times before coming to settle at Tully. It was here that Tom Murphy raised his nine children on the little farm whilst Granny Murphy ran her small little shop, fondly known at the crossroads. Maybe it was here that Mum grew a fondness of retail and serving her community. At Granny's shop and at home, which became a meeting place for the small, tight-knit community. After finishing her education in Bessemer Tech, Mum and her cousin Helen Mackin made the decision at just 16 years of age to make a life in New York. A week on board a ship out of Cove Harbour in County Cork, found the two friends land safely to be greeted by their Aunt Ellen. After a few years working as a secretary and at various jobs along with her sister Helen, who had joined them a year later in New York, Mum met her future husband, John Tully. 
John a native of Tully Valley, Cullyhanna, and Mum would travel back to Ireland in 1963 to be married in a double wedding ceremony with her younger sister Maura and Pete MacDonald. God rest him. The wedding at Cullyhanna Chapel would be followed by a joint reception in the Ballymac Hotel. In 1971, with our first three children born, Mary, Patricia, and Sean, the married couple decided to return to their native land after buying their small Uncle Barney's shop, bar and home on Main Street, Bullock, just a few short miles from where she was reared. With the last of the four children born, Christine, the couple made a life and a living there. Many happy years followed, peppered with some near miss tragedies during the darkest days of the Troubles. Great sadness was to hit twice within a few short months for Mum and the whole of the entire family. In 1987, the news of Helen's death in a vehicle accident in New York was only starting to settle in when Kathleen lost her husband and her dad, John, suddenly on the 15th of February 1987. After a period of grieving and with the support of her brothers and sisters, Kathleen, against all the odds, bounced back and continued to run the business successfully with her valued friends and customers. My mum, already a great champion of many, many charities, such as Action Cancer, continued her unceasing role of supporting positive organisations such as the St Lawrence Atunes GAA, the Regeneration Committee in Blake and the Youth Club, who she supported by giving up her time, experience and her premises. As the years rolled by, mum and her sisters and her daughter, sorry, ran the business. Kathleen took more time to travel with her sisters, Maura and Angela, who too sadly lost their partners. They had meals out, day trips, long weekends and great epic journeys, which became a regular occurrence. Our mum had a wonderful life. Sadly, for short, by complications, after a four week spell in Daisy Hill. We can only try to come to terms with what transpired in the hospital. We as a family with the, with the unstinting support from mums, brothers, sisters, nephews, nieces and grandchildren. We were relieved to bring mum out of hospital today in the village that she loved with the people who she cared about most. <clears throat> to all mum's friends, many of whom have gone to their final journey before her, and to all her loyal customers, to her brother Sean and Paddy Reilly and Rose Boy, who stood shoulder to shoulder with her through the good times and the bad. We wish to extend our sincerest thank you for making many happy memories for her mother. A wonderful mother. Here's a short poem to finish. God made a wonderful mother, a mother who never grows old. He made her smile of the sunshine, and he made her heart of pure gold. In her eyes he placed bright shining stars, in her cheeks four roses you see. God... God made a wonderful mother, and he gave that dear mother to, to me.